Hey guys, Brandon Storl here with Pebble Creek Outdoors, and today's project is going to be making wax dirt. Um, what is wax dirt? Well, wax dirt is dirt that is that has a wax coat um, put on the or that's coated in wax, um, and it keeps the water from actually penetrating it and causing it to stick together. Um, it doesn't. Unlike an antifreeze material, it doesn't keep it from freezing or anything like that, a glycol or whatever. It This wax will get the same temperature and have the same textures and feels of dirt. Um, it just, all every little grain is covered in wax and it keeps that from, you know, solidifying in the freezing process and it will keep water out of it um, is the best way I could say. So when we get done with this material, Essentially, you'll be able to pour water on top of the wax dirt and it will just bead off like water off a duck's back. That's really, really cool. Um, and uh, it's it's the best way to trap. So in the Midwest where I'm at, um, we get freeze thaw temperatures in December, um, which is probably your worst time. Um, when you get into late season, like January, February, you pretty much have like a a constant cold, a constant freeze. So you can kind of get by with the peat mosses and stuff like that late season or even snow for that matter. But uh, where we're at um, right now, having this wax dirt is essential. It's always good to have this made up before the season starts. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to do it, but um, you know, so here we are. All right. All right, guys. So what are you going to need to make wax dirt? Um, there's going to be different variants. Um, to how it's done. Um, I don't have any particular formula that I use. There's a lot of stuff available on the internet as far as your wax dirt to, you know, or your wax to dirt ratio. I'll try to see if I can locate some of my rules of thumb that I use or a couple different good figures. Um, I just kind of do it by feel. Um, I've been doing this for a few years now and I kind of got it figured out. Um, two main staples you're going to have obviously is your wax and then your dirt wax. Um, I believe the best recommended, I think, is a paraffin um, or whatever main trapper's wax is out there. They sell a lot of flake wax. You can get it on F&T and all that stuff. You're gonna pay out the nose. Um, you can find some similar stuff like this, um, which is like a craft grade kind of flaked wax, and it will be a little cheaper um, definitely than what you're going to get at your trapping stores. Um, up to you how much you want to spend, how much you want to dig around for it. Uh, dirt. Dirt is on the menu. And I'll tell you guys, um, you know, it, it can be hard to find dry dirt in some places, I'm sure. Um, and you got to think outside the box with this. So this is actually a sand or like a loam. It's a silty sand mixture. I've had really good luck with that. And I'll tell you where I find it is under bridges um, bridges under bridges they never get any moisture so it'll be dry as a bone um, and usually it's this kind of mixture this sand comes into play you know with the with the rivers and the flooding because we flood all the time out here um, you can also get really dry dirt um, out of barns you know feedlot shops anything that has a permanent structure over top of it um, where that's just got years of just no moisture getting into the soil because otherwise you would actually have to dry this dirt out prior to starting this project. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna silt this or sift this out. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of sift out this material just to make sure we got all the sticks and dirt clods and all that stuff. Things that you don't want in your wax dirt. Um, like I said, this sandy material is really, really easy to work with. Not a lot of dust and uh, works really nice. So you can kind of sift that out just like you would your dirt holes. And what you're looking for is that dry product that has no organic material in it. Um, you know, you don't want sticks and stuff like that. Anything that uh, is extra 
in there that's not supposed to be in there is going to turn into a ball of wax and then you'll end up having to sift that out as well and so yeah get that get that stuff out of there you don't want it you just want pure clean sand or dirt i need to work out more so the next process here is going to be put some of this sand in a baking sheet. Now, you could use like a, a bigger pan or whatever, a baking pan. I use these disposable ones, stack a few together, usually got some left over after turkey. Season them um, and uh, they're just, they're great. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna preheat this, this dirt and sand. I do like smaller batches. I'm gonna add in the wax um, as we go along here. But first we're gonna let this warm up. I just got it over my wood stove um, because, well, it's kind of cool way to do it and I'm completely out of propane right now. So, story of my life. Um, yeah, we'll let that heat up and then we'll add some wax. Right. So I looked up the ratio far as what we need for wax dirt and wax. Um, and it's gonna be a one to four ratio or four to one ratio, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so one part wax, four part dirt. Um, I've got this uh, pretty well heated up. My wood burner is crazy hot right now. Um, so we're sweating. Um, Eli's gonna help me stir. Um, so one thing I, I probably didn't mention was that the fact that having uh, flake wax is um, very very important you don't want to just throw a chunk of wax in here and, and expect that to work you're gonna get a lot of problems it's gonna clump up um, having some wax or flake wax um, I'm gonna use my sifter to kind of sift it in there and we're just gonna kind of sift this in and one of the important parts of this is that you want to mix it kind of as you go I'll let Eli do that um, and you want to keep mixing it real good, get it all tied in. Um, the reason for that, um, it will ball up if you let it sit too long or you're going to get, you know, areas that have too much wax or, you know, in areas that don't have enough. So you want a good mix, kind of let it warm up, bring up the temperature, add a little bit more, um, just kind of go along. Um, yeah, and this is essentially what you do until you get that good consistency. You'll see a little bit uh, of coloration change. It'll kind of darken up a little bit. You don't want it too dark. Obviously, that means you've got too much wax in there. If it starts getting like putty or peanut buttery kind of deal, you've got too much wax. Um, you want it to still have a real powdery um kind of feel to it you want it to still be like natural dirt um so we'll just add a little bit more keep stirring that in so we're going to keep stirring this in working it um, once we're done i'll show you guys kind of the finished product of what how it's going to look and and uh We'll probably grab some water and kind of give you guys a little demonstration of, of what it, how it works and what, and what it looks like. Okay, so we got this done. Um, I kind of zoomed the camera in here so you guys can see this. Um, so what I did is I lay it out once uh, to cool it down once I, it comes off the hot plate. Um, and then I mix it all together so that it doesn't clump up. It's gonna wanna kinda sit. Don't just pour it into a bucket because it will just turn into like a, almost like a rock. So you wanna kinda knead it um, together. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda demonstrate here what this, how this works and what it looks like. Um, one of the things about this, with this sandy material I really like um, is that when it's completed, it really does a good job um, of just staying loose. Um, I know sometimes if you use some of, uh, you know, more of an organic material, 
um, it'll have a tendency to clump up a little bit, but this stuff stays very, very loose. Um, it's not quite as natural, obviously, because it's more of a sandy material, but I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so when I pour this on here, you'll see that it just beads right off um, of that wax and it will not, it won't mix in. Like I can sit here and feather it around. It just won't become part of the dirt. It isolates the, uh, the water. Um, so like I said, it will freeze, like it, it will get freezing temperature, but it won't stick together. It won't trap and hold that moisture. Um, and that's what you want, um, you know, and, and it just it just makes it good. And I've used this for a couple years now with a lot of success. Um, you know, I run peat moss in the early season, but when we get to this uh, this freeze thaw cycle time frame, this is this is the cat's meow for canine sets. So.